Please be seated. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we will light the fourth candle of Advent, which is the candle of love. And today, our attention is directed toward Mary, the mother of our Lord. So let us begin. Peace and light, I'm sorry, light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, God. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. We light it again along with the candles of hope and peace, again to remind us that Jesus, born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and will bring all of us hope, peace, and joy. And now we will light the first three candles. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with the love of God. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus great, gave great love to his mother, so his presence in the world gives love to all those who would come to know him. He heals and gives all hope, peace, joy, and love when they come to believe in him. From hope, peace, and joy, love is experienced. We light the candle of love today to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have love and that through him we have life. Love is like a burning light that shines in a dark place. As we look upon this candle, let us celebrate the love that God has for each of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank for the love you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your love with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord our God,
Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us all pause and make an examination of our consciences. Having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies, with purified hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah. Until you shall come forth from me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose loins are the loins of Judah, and whose hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you filled your servant Elizabeth with the Holy Spirit as she greeted the mother of our Lord. Fill us now with your grace that we too may rejoice in your salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Micah the prophet. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God, and they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. The gradual. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. Amen. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, Sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. St. Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ, be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nyek venture for Philonius Christus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Words taken from the Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, hearers of the Word of God. On this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. 
Over the past few weeks, we lit candles on our Advent wreath that represent hope, peace, and joy. Three pillars of Christianity. Today, we reflect on the fourth pillar of Christianity, the fulfillment of hope, peace, and joy, that being love. Jesus tells us there is no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. There is no greater love than God sending his Son into the world to be the Redeemer, to be the Regenerator, and to be the Savior of mankind. Years ago, the Beatles wrote a song entitled, All You Need Is Love. And in the lyrics we find that nothing is impossible as long as you have love. You know, there have been millions of words which speak of love. Love is defined simply as an intense feeling of deep affection. My brothers and sisters, when you find love, you cling to that power. For in love, it changes, it transforms, and it makes everyone a better person. I remember teaching in catechism to those preparing for First Holy Communion two words, physical and spiritual. I explained that dealing with love, one can experience love in one's life. But true love is not just experienced, but is rather felt. Although the heart is not medically directed, associated with the power of love, there have been countless writings that say that love comes from one's heart. While I am no expert on the subject of love, I have felt love, and I'm sure all of you have felt love. Today I'd like to share with you two Christian writers who spoke of love. They were St. Paul and St. John. I would like to have you think of these words. In the 13th chapter verses 1 through 3 of Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, he speaks of love. He writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can phantom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love. I gain nothing. Paul, in this brief scripture passage, says that without love, one is truly empty. One is nothing. And one gains nothing in life. In the fourth chapter of John's first letter to the church, he speaks of love. He says, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love 
does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, love lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, and these simple passages from the first letter of John, love is mentioned 13 times. In today's gospel, it brings us to have an insight into the depth of God's love. It was found in a young virgin named Mary, who was righteous unto the Lord. She loved God, and God chose this love from her to choose her to bear his only begotten Son. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, if but for a moment, one can reflect upon love and the meaning of love that God had for Mary, as well as the love that God has for all of us by sending into the world his only begotten to bring eternal life to him, one will become closer to the understanding that spiritual love comes from within. It is truly a gift that God placed inside of each of us when he gave us life. It is the good news that we will soon celebrate at Christmas. The good news that Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ we see love. That birth that took place in Bethlehem was given out of love and through our willingness to follow the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are taught by John that love becomes complete and perfected in us. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one of God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, 
He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I see him, though not now. I behold him, though not near. A star shall advance from Jacob, and a staff shall rise from Israel. Please be seated. contrition and humility, and grant that the sacrifice be so made by us that may please thee, O Lord God. Come, O sanctifier and eternal God, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your most holy name. I wash my hands in innocence, and go about your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house in the place where your glory dwells sweep me not away with sinners nor my life with bloodthirsty men men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hand are full of bribes but as for me i walk in my integrity redeem me and be gracious to me my foot stands on level ground in the great congregation i will bless the lord Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven we ask this through jesus christ our lord amen pray my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by god our heavenly father amen let us pray O oh God, you showed the world the splendor of your glory in the coming of your Son, born of the Virgin Mary. May we worthily offer this holy sacrifice and celebrate the mystery of God made man. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your four hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. For through the promise, Sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and unending love, sharing in the hope of patriarchs and prophets. May we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our own hearts. Therefore, we join this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna not in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, my brothers and sisters, in our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us offer prayers that God would bless all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and pray for not only their health, but for the wellness of their families. Let us give God our thanks this day for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and health care workers who strive daily to save others. In our deepest prayers this day, let us remember all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals, as well as all those who suffer violence both here and abroad. In our prayers, let us remember those who have recently seen devastation of their homes and of their lives in the tornadoes that ripped across our United States. And pray for their welfare and their being. Let us also in our prayers give God our thanksgiving for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad, and pray that as we come close to the celebration of Christmas, that you would keep them safe and return them safely to their families. And let us remember one another and all of our loved ones, those who are present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, 
together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you do this. Do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, 
revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, Together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity according to your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My brothers and sisters, for those who will not be receiving communion sacramentally, 
let us offer together the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise. Will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord. Receive the body.
Lord, what we have received on her lips may be received mentally. And may this temporal gift become to us an everlasting healing. <coughs> may your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me who lives and reigns forever and ever. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, most gracious Father, the mystery of your eternal word took flesh on her. With the Virgin Mary placed her life in your service. Through this Eucharist, may we receive the Spirit to help us prepare for His coming in truth, faith, and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and our twin God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light. Light for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, Yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thank
another moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now and Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 